body is simple. It means you see God when you look in the mirror and that the body of man is God and that there's no mystery God in the sky. You are God. Hey, what's going on, fam? Peace from the Netherlands. This is Mark Jenkins. We're back with another incredible episode of The Anabolic Mind. And I'm very excited today. I have a super cool guest with some great stories. I already know <laughs> it's going to be awesome. But we um, have the uh, one of the premier adult film stars of the 90s, um, AVN Award winner. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Starting over 200 films. Let's give a round of applause to Dominique Simone. Yay! Woo! And how are you? Good. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm excited to have you on. I'm excited to be here. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So um, we're going to talk about your book as well, The Star is Porn, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And uh, my, my first question to you is uh, what inspired you to write the book? I have been getting a lot of people asking me about what it was like to be in the adult film industry. And I just decided it was time to tell my story and to put it out there. And I hope that a lot of people will be able to take some really good things from my story. <laughs> cool. Was it uh, was it difficult to be so? Because I have a book as well that um, it was difficult for me to actually open up and write everything and expose myself. Did you feel any type of uh, apprehension with that? Yes, it was difficult. I basically had to go back in time and rewalk through a lot of experiences that I went through. It was kind of therapeutic for me, though, because... I look at my life now and I look at how my life was then and I thought it was so normal, but it was so chaotic and crazy. So right. I'm just happy that I'm in this place that I'm in right now. <laughs> right, you're in a totally different space. You're feeling good now. What are you doing now? Um, right now, I am I went back and I got it back into nursing and mm -hmm. I also do concerts, the concert promotions with different artists. I did a concert in 2022 with Mary J. Blige. So I'm um, one of my clients for 17 years. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I trained her for a long time. Oh, yes. I loved her. I, I met her in New York and oh. did show in New York and Baltimore as well. And nice. I was able um, to to meet her in the back, backstage and I gave her some boots so uh, as a gift. And it was amazing. It was so amazing. She's so wonderful. So right. transition from movies into the, the entertainment industry, which was the main reason why I had come out to Los Angeles. I wanted to be in entertainment. So I got in entertainment. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. And how, how did you get into uh, adult entertainment in the first place? I came out to Los Angeles on a scholarship to go to college. Mm. And I had three roommates, four roommates, and two of them decided to go back home. And me and my roommate... My name was Charlotte. We were stuck with their rent. And I needed money. My, my family wasn't very supportive of my decision to come out to Los Angeles. I'm from Georgia. They didn't want me to come so far away. So they weren't as supportive as I thought they would be. So I was kind of on my own. I came out here with no friends, no family here. So I needed to make money. And I answered a ad for figure modeling which I thought was bathing suit modeling, but it was nude modeling. Okay. And, and when I went in to meet the agent, he said, okay, I can book you for this magazine, Hustler Magazine. And I said, Hustler Magazine, what is that? And he showed me the magazine. And he also showed me a, some other magazines, Players Magazine, mm -hmm. Black Tail, um, Hustler, Penthouse, a lot of different magazines that he booked girls for. And that's how I started. I started, I did my first magazine shoot for Hustler Magazine. And from there, I met someone that was in the adult film industry. And they said, hey, you know, would you be interested in doing an adult film? And they invited me on a set. And I went on the set and they asked me to work that same day. It was and, crazy. And, you, and you worked the same day? That same day. Yes. Wow, gangster, very gangster. Yes. And I worked with, a, <laughs> I worked with um, Peter North. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I worked with him, so it was really scary. I was just 18 years old, and wow. I was set, and I'm walking around, and there's just all of these different setups, and it's big studio, like a Hollywood studio. 
and different setups and girls walking around naked and hair and makeup. And it was crazy. It was just crazy. But I did my first movie that day. And from there, I met a girl by the name of Angel Kelly. She okay. was she was the it girl in the 80s. And, and she retired in the, I think she retired in the early 90s. And she was shooting a film and she asked me if I would want to play her sister in the film because she was retiring from the industry and this was going to mm. be a film. So she brought me in, playing her sister in a film, and that's how I got started. Wow, was, interesting. You know, even and, more dangerous. And, and what, was your, what was your sexual experience before then? Were you like super promiscuous or once in a while? Or? I, I was never super promiscuous. I was raised in a home of, of a strict background by my grandmother. And she didn't let me do anything. I was I was a cheerleader in high school. I was I was in the band for uh, for a small period of time. But she she didn't let me do anything. So she was very very strict. And she would tell me sex was bad. You know, boys are bad. So with me, I just wanted to get out there and experience that. Right, right. Because anytime someone tells you something is bad, of course you're like, you want to go do it. Exactly, exactly. So bad about it. But I wouldn't say that I was promiscuous. I I wasn't promiscuous, but I did start having sex at a young age. Okay, okay. And uh, how was the money? So that first, uh, what kind of check was that, the first one? The, the first check I got that day was for $2,000, which was a lot of money for me back then because mm -hmm. I was trying to come up with our rent, which was $1,000. So for me, that was really good was money. For yeah. one his work, yes, really wow. good money. And in and no, no, go ahead. Was it? Did you say in and out? No, 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 no. I, I was going to ask you something else, but you were still saying <laughs> I, I have so many questions. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, See, I'm, I, I'm 53, so I know who you are <laughs> from that era. So it's yeah, it's a good pleasure. It's really a pleasure to talk to you. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. So you were saying. What, 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 what was the question? <laughs> oh, yeah. We were talking about promiscuity, and, and then we went into the money. And then uh, you were saying that's a lot for the rent. And then so after that, you, it was uh, it was all. After that, after that, I was basically working almost every day. And I started doing autograph, assign, uh, autograph signings and doing personal appearances in Vegas and New York. And that's when everything got crazy because I didn't realize how big the adult film industry was. I was just shooting my movies here in Los Angeles on this girl from Georgia. And then all of a sudden I'm in New York and my name is on this marquee and my picture and I'm being rushed into a, a dance, a place to dance with a bodyguard on my arm and people else out front with pictures wanting me to sign. So I'm 19 at this time. Right. And it was just pretty amazing walking up in Times Square. And at that time in New York, things were different. There were a lot of, every other place was a, was a sex club or a video store and they all had my movies in the window. So I didn't realize how big the sex industry was. And I'm walking by these stores and people are like, you're Dominique Simone, you're the feature that's over at Show World. Wow. I was just in shock. I was amazed. And everything was so fast paced. The cabs going by so fast. The people walking so fast. It was just so much to take in at one time. Right. So it was pretty amazing for me. My mind was pretty blown. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. At 19, that, that's a, that's a lot. And yes. what was your what was your uh, diet like at uh, 19 during that time? What were you eating? Were you worried about fitness, or you just young ripped? There was no nothing you to think about it. At 19, I could basically eat what I wanted, but I ended up getting a trainer. I had a trainer. Her name was Sharice, and she was also Angela Bassett's trainer. Wow. And um, we would go and train at Gold's Gym in Hollywood and it was a lot of fun, but she took me out of that gym because she said I was too distracted because there's always so much going on in the gym in the morning. When I would go there and work out, there would be like Marky Mark would be there. Um, 
Tyra Banks, a lot of um, Ice Cube, and then right. Angela Bassett. So Angela would be right before me. So she would usually put me on the treadmill first for about 15 minutes to warm up. And then she'll put me on for 15 minutes after our workout. And when I would come in, either Angela would probably be, she would be finishing, so she would be on the treadmill. So she put me on the treadmill next to her, and I would see her. She would be running. Yeah, and yeah. I was looking at her and go, oh, my goodness, how can you do that? I, I couldn't run on the treadmill like that. I was just, you know, slowly walking. Mm -hmm, and she was mm -hmm. oh, so fast. And she was just, like, so fit and so amazing. So I, I, I really, really liked working out. I really liked working out with Sharice. She was a really good trainer. So I did that for some years and I didn't have to watch what I ate. But after a while, after I got into my like late twenties, I really had to watch what I ate. I really yeah. did. Metabolism slowed down a little bit of change. Yes. Yes. I could basically eat whatever I wanted. And usually when we were on a set, we get in and start working and they have a craft table. So they'd have maybe like bagels or something but I would be so nervous and I, I'd just go get in the makeup chair and get my makeup done. I, I, I wasn't eating anything, but we always had a big dinner. We'd have a, a big, big, huge dinner in the evening. And, you know, for lunch, I think for lunch, they'd have like a crafts table out with like chips and stuff, but just a lot of junk food, nothing like super healthy. Right, right. Interesting. Uh, same, same, same. Now, when you go to uh, do a set, when you go on an acting gig, the food is terrible in those craft service. It's a lot better now, but it's still so much junk food. You see, it's like yeah, lots of music. yes, yes, yes. And I've I've been on I've been on movie sets too, big movie sets, and yeah, it was about the same. About the same. Yeah, bagels. about the same. They always have bagels. They always have bagels for some reason. Bagels and and. <laughs> Yes, I'm just like this is yeah, so and donuts, funny. yeah, and donuts. They always have bagels and donuts. It's funny when I visit my clients on the set. I'm like, and for us to have to be fit and and in shape, I was like, this is a horrible diet for me. But for for lunch, I think lunch would be a little bit healthier. They'd have like maybe like salads and and they put maybe some veggies on the table, carrots or whatever. But the dinners just pasta, pizza. Yeah, really good dinner. Right. Really good. I, I went to I went to go work in um the con at the Con Film Festival in France. Mm -hmm. And that was super amazing because all day their craft table, they had all kinds of cheeses and breads and wine and mm -hmm. these big extravagant dinners with um homemade meatballs and lasagna and pasta and salad. So that was pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Yeah, Europe was much different. I'm in the Netherlands right now. And uh, yeah, the food is 100% healthier. You know, they serve complete meals. So it's not just bread or not just meat, but you get a good variety and uh, vegetables a lot fresher here. And uh, the coffee, you drink coffee? No, I don't drink coffee. I like Starbucks every once in a while, but just like making coffee every day, no, no. Mm. <laughs> what was the general vibe on the, on the set? Like, is it a high energy or is everybody just about their business or, you know, is it like, you know? It's, you know, okay, I'm just going to basically kind of run you through it. When I would get there, there would be a makeup artist there. So I'd be in makeup for about two hours here in makeup. And then the actor would come in and introduce himself. Hi, we're going to be working together and we'd run lines and, and it was basically like that. Um, there weren't too many people on the set when we when we shot. There would be the camera guy. There would be a light guy, um, a grip guy, just like you know when you're on a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on a mm -hmm. show. And the makeup artists would sometimes, depending on who the makeup artist was, <laughs> because some of the makeup artists came from the the straight side of it, the industry. So they weren't right. used to being around, <laughs> you know, it's like, can you go touch her up? And, you know, right. Like, okay. Makeup artists would be nervous about being on the set, but some were a little bit more open to being on the set, but that was basically it. Maybe so, about no more than 10 people on a set, which may seem like a lot of people, but once those cameras start rolling. Yeah, you forget about it. 
I, I didn't I didn't even see anybody else but the person I was working with. So so how did you do it? Was it just a job to you and you just compartmentalize or you know, or, or was it fun? It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I I worked with some amazing actors and I actually had a boyfriend that was in the industry when I first started out. So he directed me, he he pointed me in a good direction with I worked with the best producers and and I worked with the best directors. So it was a lot of fun for me. And I plus I love sex. So right. <laughs> that, that makes it fun. I was doing something I love to do and working with amazing people. And we were all like a family. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. When did it when did it uh start not to be fun for you? Or did it? Or was it fun the whole time? I it was it was fun for me the whole time, but after a, after a, a certain amount of time, it does become a business. It's it's not as fun as it was before, but I really enjoyed doing movies the whole time. I worked with amazing people, amazing oh. actors, and and I was able to have a lot of creative control over what I did and who I worked with. So I think that made it a lot more enjoyable for me. It wasn't like I showed up and I didn't know who. I was working with and I was able to pick certain scripts. There's certain scripts that I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do anything that I felt like was demeaning to women okay. or, or just derogatory. So I had a lot of creative control and I really liked that because there's a lot of girls that probably don't have a lot of creative control. I, I chose my makeup artist that I wanted to work with. And I was able to choose what companies I worked with. And I was mostly under contract throughout my mm -hmm. whole career. So that was a lot of fun. I didn't have any surprises when I showed up to work. Okay. So that was pretty amazing. And like I said, I was able to pick my actresses and my actors as well to work with. Oh, that's really dope. So I, I had some favorites. <laughs> yeah. Who was your favorite? Who was your favorite guy to work with? I really enjoyed working with um, Lexington Steele. He, he was, I dated him for a little bit, but I did one movie with him and I really loved working with him on film. And I loved working with Peter North, mm -hmm. Tim Boy, Rocco. Um, as far as the women, my friend Taylor Wayne, I really loved working with her. I did. I, I worked on the set with Janet Jackme. She didn't do Girl Girl, but I liked you know running dialogue with her and working with her. She was amazing to work with. Okay. I never got a chance to work with Heather Hunter though, and I love Heather. She's amazing. I never got a chance to work with her on film. <laughs> on film. Was there? Was there? A, is is it something? Was it something that was a no no for you? Like I'm never doing this on film, or were you pretty open to doing everything? I wasn't a big anal person. I mm -hmm. was like, and and I, even though I did do a few of those scenes, I that wasn't just I wasn't big on that. I I did I did one gangbang, which was seven guys, which I did Howard Stern about ten years ago, and he said that's hardly a gangbang now. I wow. have. Some <laughs> that's regular now, right? Excuse, <laughs> excuse that's, me. That's, that's regular now, right? How was Norma saying? I know, right? See, it's like seven guys, it's hardly a gangbang. And for me, seven guys was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> because uh, I, how I was, long was that? Bro, I was in control of the scene. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they were all on me at one time, and it was right. It was basically I went to them, and it was I was in control of the whole scenario. So it was it was it was pretty interesting. Yes, it was pretty interesting. And the movie was it was, it was called Star Bangers, and it was shot beautifully, and it was classy, and I just had a lot of fun. The actors were very cool. It took us for it took us. About 10 hours to shoot it, though. 10 mm. hours, yes. Because, you know, we would start up and then we would stop. 
and she, we changed setups probably about four times. So with hair and makeup and and lunch and every all the breaks that we took, it took about it was about a ten hour day. That's a real day. Yeah, it was, but it was fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, is there was there a very big disparity between um, what the uh, African American actors got paid and uh, the white actors? Was there a big difference back then in porn? Yes, there was, but I I don't think that I really dealt with that a lot because I was under contract. I wasn't I wasn't going on cold calls and just taking jobs here and there. I was under contract, so I had a set rate. And but there there was there was a time when I started feature dancing and there were some clubs that that would not take a, um, black features. And there's a few times where I went to do some autograph signings. I remember going to this one store in Kansas and they had paper bags over some of their movies. And I was like, what is this about? And they had put paper bags over the interracial movies and oh, wow. of course when i entered the industry in the 90s that's when interracial was really popular so i came in at the right moment and there weren't a lot of african-american actresses um there was angel kelly who was leaving the industry there was nina DePonka, ebony eyes but they were mm -hmm. all leaving the industry so it was just me and heather hunter and janet jack me and then now there's probably about a hundred yeah, yeah. in women. It, it's but, really the industry really grew. It's even bigger now, right? Than you were saying back then. It's <laughs> huge now. It is so huge. And I think that now the actresses have a more creative control because they have OnlyFans, so they can do their OnlyFans and and people can just pick up their phone and just start shooting something and just post it directly online. So yeah, 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 it's crazy now how everything just exploded, blew up sexually. Uh, do you find what do you think about the um, the U.S. attitude towards sex as opposed to Europe? Do you find it's a lot more restrictive in the United States? Oh, uh, when when I went to the Cannes Film Festival, I turned on the TV and it was set porn on regular TV. I was like, "What is this? It's like noon, you know? It was crazy." Yeah. <laughs> I remember we went on a on a boat ride and we were I guess it was kind of like um I don't know we went we went on, on a boat ride and there was a lot of a lot of paparazzi out there at the beach taking pictures and I remember one of the actresses saying, Oh, take off your top. And I was like, What? <laughs> she was like, hey, just take off your top. And I remember all the paparazzi saying, take off your top, take off your top. And I was like, no, I'm not taking off my top. But it was just, they were so much more open about sex in Europe. And I feel like we're not as open no. about sexuality in the U.S. And um, I really enjoyed being there and seeing people be so free and 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 just expressive with their sexuality. It was a lot of fun. I was a little bit shy there because I just wasn't used to going topless on beaches or walking around topless at the beach, but it was a normal thing there. Yeah, exactly. When you go to a beach in, in Europe, it's normal. People just walking around like whatever. Yes. And, and it doesn't matter what shape they're in either. They don't, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing, I think. Which is good because you're not, you know, you're not inhibiting, you're, you're not expressing yourself. It's your, it's your body. Your yes, state. yes. So, Have you ever been to a nude beach? Yes, uh, I went to a nude beach. Um, I was in the navy, which which was bad. Which was bad. This is a bad story because uh, I think it was in uh, Australia, and I had been at sea for like maybe three months, and uh, we decided to go to a nude beach, no sex. So you know. Immediately, you walking around, you know, and it's distasteful, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everybody's looking at you, and you got a hard on, so it wasn't it a good look? My first uh, new beach, you know, what I mean, so I was just looking like you know, on the ship for three months, no sex. So oh, wow. that, that was funny. Everybody was looking like, oh, that's so unsightly. You walking around, like you know, so it wasn't a good my first new beach experience. Oh. I think I went to another one. Um, yeah, years and years later, uh, I can't remember where I was at. 
but some place in Europe again. But that one was a little bit cooler. I was I was a little bit cool. I could contain myself a little bit better. So that was, it went, went a little bit better. Have you ever been to a swinger club? I never went to a swinger club. I I went to one with my with my boyfriend at the time, Lexington still. Mm -hmm. It was it was pretty funny because we walked in and I had never been to a sex club before yeah. and everyone was looking at us like, oh, are you guys going to take off your clothes and have sex? And and I wasn't I was just there to experience it, to just see what it was all about. But it was pretty amazing walking into this scene and just seeing just people having sets all around me. And then they were coming up to us saying, you want to join in? Yeah, you can just jump, come on in, right? I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was pretty fun. And they have these clubs out. They, I think they have one in New York, too. It's called Trapeze. And, and then they have certain things that they do out here in Los Angeles where you have to send your picture in and, and get approved to go to the swinger party. And women usually get in free, but you can you can bring a guest. And I guess I guess everybody has to be tested for STDs and everything like that. But they have some pretty exclusive swing clubs out here in Los Angeles that a lot of people try to get in. Well, I am in I am in the Netherlands, like the sex capital. So yeah, I might I might just check it out. Not that you not that you give a good uh, not that you give a good referral. You know, I might just go to one and check it out. See, see what's cracking. Is it like Amsterdam there? Yeah, yeah, Amsterdam. Uh, Rotter I'm in Rotterdam, but that's a that's maybe an um, hour, forty five minute drive to Amsterdam. They got the red light yeah, district. There's so uh, all clubs there, and yeah, there's all kinds of. of if, if you want to get into it, everything is here that you want to get into. Lots of partying and fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, lots of good vibes. Lots of good vibes here. You know, but uh, the, I've been here for seven months, and uh, people have been telling me everybody's a swinger. You just don't know. All the married couples here are swinging. They go to the clubs. I'm like, really? That person? They're like, yeah, yeah, they're swingers. I was like, oh, wow. So it's a whole, you know, it's a whole thing here. Interesting. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but I guess it's a whole thing everywhere. People just. You think you would you know, actually get into something like that? Huh? You think you would actually do something like that? Um, you know what? I don't, I, I never say never. I never say never. You, you never know. You never know. I, uh, for me, I, uh, I was fat. I had a 45-inch waist and big man boobs, so I could never get any girl. Like, I broke my virginity with a school slut. I started crying. I thought she was my girlfriend, and all of my friends told me they slept with her. So I was never able to get girls until I actually went to the Navy and got in shape. So once I got in shape and I was in the Navy, I, anything that I could get into, I did it. So I thought. So I was in the Philippines, Thailand, you know, I was all those places. Oh, that's so fun. So I, I had I had a good time. I've done a lot. There's not too much I haven't done. I love <laughs> put, it, it. put it that way. <laughs> but uh, I've never been to I've never been to a club like a swingers club. Mm, never, okay. Never been, I've never been so you never know here so you never know. Oh wow! So when I when I um, first spoke to you, you had just moved to the Netherlands, right? That's yeah, I, I came out for a month, right, and then um, just to see what was happening, and you then I got, I got I got I got injured. Oh yes, I remember. Yeah, I, I got I got injured, so I ended up having to stay. I couldn't fly. I ruptured my quadricep tendon, and um, my girlfriend nursed me back to health here oh, <laughs> and took okay. good care of me. She's gonna love me talking about uh, going to the Spingers Club. But it's uh, good girl, right. Yeah, that's, that's that's gonna be great. <laughs> I see how that, <laughs> I see how that goes over after she watches that. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, yeah. So I ended up staying because uh, I wanted to get my work permit to go back and forth. And that turned out to be a very lengthy process to get the work permit. And in fact, out of seven months, I just got it last week, two weeks ago, officially. So I can officially go back and forth uh, for two years, I got my work permit. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it actually worked out. But I, I've been coming here since 2000 with okay. the artist touring. Every time they toured, you know, I was here. With artists? With music? Uh, and, yeah, and D'Angelo, Mary J. Blige, um, oh, you know. Hmm. Anytime I tour with the artist, so I was always. Were you doing uh, security work or something like that? Were no you training, fitness training. Oh wow! Yeah, yes, yeah. so I was doing fitness. Yeah, I trained uh, Puff for the marathon. I trained D'Angelo for the Untitled video. Yeah, his body was so amazing in that video. Yeah, he did a good job. He did a good job. Did a good I, have, job. I have to tell him like, that uh, that you're on the podcast. I got to tell him. You're, you're, you're in awesome shape, though. You're, oh my, you're in amazing shape. 
I mean, yeah, not, not bad for an old guy. I'm hanging in there. Thank you. Thank you. You're not old. <laughs> yeah, you know, 53, you know, middle is age. It hard to keep up, keep, keep, keep your body in shape? Is it really hard? Or? Yeah, people ask me that often, but um, it's not really a pressure thing for me because um, I like it. You mm -hmm. know, if you don't enjoy it, I think it becomes a, oh, shit, I got to go to the gym again. But, you know, I see so many benefits and I see the guys my age and yeah. how terrible they look. And that's good motivation to keep going. You know, like I want to be able to have sex into my 70s or 80s and still still be able to, slay, you know, knock it out. You got to go so strong. <laughs> you got to keep the testosterone up. You got to keep the workouts going to keep you because the muscle mass, uh, the more muscle mass you have on your body really dictates how much testosterone you produce as a man. So if you have very little muscle mass, your body has no motivation to keep testosterone. So the training keeps your testosterone up. So I realized that, so it keeps me motivated to hit. As well as I'm in, still training people, so I try to look as good as I can and get in shape. I'm oh, looking, okay. looking to get into the ring. On, I was looking to get into the ring before I got injured, but I'm looking to actually get into my first MMA fight in the next couple of years. Wow, so where, training where right now. That, where's that gonna be? Uh, uh, pro probably here, probably here. Goodness. Yeah, I got some coaches here. You you asked me more questions than any other guest that I've uh, had on here. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're interviewing me and I'm interviewing you. Yeah, you're interviewing me at the same time. Yeah, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> what what uh? So when did what about the drugs? How much drugs is in the um adult film industry? Well, you know, people always thought that we just sit around and we're getting high, but. To tell you the truth, there are no drugs on the sets, and it, that was not allowed. Mm -hmm. If you were caught with drugs on the set, you were banned from the set. So most of the craziness happened away from the movie sets, like when we okay. were at the war award shows. And it was so crazy because I would go to the award shows, and you know, certain actors would throw parties, like Shawn Michaels would throw a big party, and mm -hmm. everyone would go. And you know, I go into the bathroom and people would be in there just having sets. And I'm going, oh, my goodness. You know, we have sets with these people all the time. <laughs> so why are they <laughs> to just everybody have sets here? You know, I was like, when they go to the Oscars, I'm pretty sure they don't get together all and just hang out and canoodle like that. You know, so it was it was just crazy. Um, but most of the sets occurs at our events. When we at have the our events, huh? Yeah, we, we have our big event in Vegas. But there was, there, there were a lot of people that did do drugs that were in our industry. And plus, you know, it's drug sets and rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the, just like the record business. Training and and, and um, we, we hung out with a lot of rock stars, you know. They, mm -hmm. they some of the rock stars, you're not a rock star until you dated a porn star. So I, I hung out with a lot of people that were in the the rock music industry and yes there was a lot of drugs flowing around a lot <laughs> and, and it was and it was the 90s it was the 90s so yeah yeah, yeah. Cocaine like, it, was, it was like super drug time yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. interesting what, what, what i really enjoyed about the 90s was when i entered the industry we we did a lot of parody movies and when i came in in living color was on so, yeah. we did, like, so we did a spinoff in Loving Color. Um, John Singleton had just done his movie, Boys in the Hood. We did Girls in the Hood. So we would do the the adult spinoff to these right. shows. And it was a lot of fun reenacting those shows. And I, I did I did a lot of parodies. So it was a lot of fun. A lot yeah, of cool. cool. Yes. Yes. I met a couple of porn stars, not many, but you know, I'm working with the artist, so I bumped into a few. Well, a couple, huh? <laughs> I wanna know. Well, I'm not gonna mention any names. I'm not gonna mention any names, but I, I bumped into a few, mm -hmm. and, and, but they were, I was always intimidated. I was like, you know what? I can never sleep with one. How am I gonna measure up to the, you know what I mean? The, 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 the guy she was just doing on the fucking movie. Shawn Michaels, let's this go. So I never did it, but you know, in retrospect, I'm like, man, you know, I probably should have did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because 
it's, it's like a, it's like training with a personal trainer. You're gonna get a better session because the person's an expert at what they're doing, right? It's the same type That's of thing really I, would, I would imagine. That's really funny because I remember it was maybe New Year's one year. I was with Heather Hunter and we went to a party in Los Angeles. And I remember we went to this party and we walked in and everybody was staring at us. And the girls, of course, they weren't very nice to us, but the guys were like, oh my goodness, that's Heather Hunter and Dominique Simone. And that night we ended up, we didn't even really hang out with anyone. These girls tried to fight us at this party and Heather mm -hmm. jumped in and she was, Heather jumped in and she defended me in this one instance where this girl wanted to fight me. So it was just a crazy night, crazy, crazy night. And we ended up just going back home. And I remember we stopped at 7-Eleven and got some bologna and we made bologna sandwiches and we went back to her house and she painted and we just hung out and vibed. So it, it was it was just a crazy time. We we didn't really have a lot of fun that night. Mm. We didn't have a lot of fun that night at all. And guys would come up to us and talk, try to talk to us, but the girls were just so mean to us. And I remember these two guys in particular came up and they were talking to me and Heather, and their girlfriends came and wanted to fight us, and that was it. It was we were done, and we we're like we're going home. So <laughs> mm. that. Was, yeah, it was a crazy. That was a crazy night for us. Crazy, crazy night. <laughs> Interesting. Do you find that, uh, like, when uh, regular dudes who are not in the industry they approach you, are they more intimidated or more fascinated, or more, is it a mix of both? More fascinated. Um, I find that a lot of the guys feel like they can live out their fantasies with girls that are in the industry, and they're. Number one fantasy is, I want to be with you and another girl. I want to see you with another girl. That's like the main thing that I got. So um, I, I had I had a few boyfriends that were in the industry, and that didn't work out too well for me because it's just you get jealous, you know. Right, um, right, right. Your boyfriend's working with your friends. You're working with his friends. Right. So. It was it was just it was kind of kind of difficult to have a relationship and be in the industry. But I, I, I dated more people that were in the straight film industry. I dated mm -hmm. actors and and I dated a few models that were in the straight film industry. And and I dated mostly people in entertainment because I, I didn't really have time to get out and meet people. I was working all the time and traveling all the time. So I, I met a lot of the people that I dated at events. And, and so, but I, I didn't have too many serious boyfriends while I was in the industry. And just like I said, it's, it's, it's difficult. Relationships are difficult in general. So, and being in the sex industry and, have it. it it was it was it, it wasn't as difficult with with my boyfriends that were not in the industry i had one boyfriend in particular he was just like you know he was so arrogant you know he was just like if you're going to leave me for anybody else then you're crazy so it was easier for me to date people that were not in our industry but i did take him to europe with me mm -hmm. And, and he came on one of the the video shoots and he got really upset because he watched a scene with, you know, there were some girls that came in from Hungary and and they were shooting. And I, 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 I kind of felt like they got worked a lot harder than I did. I'm coming mm. to the U.S. and I'm this big film actress and we were getting paid very well. And I spoke to these girls were young some of them were like 19 and 20 and they would take a train ride they say for three hours to come over and work and I felt like they worked a lot harder than I did I saw mm. them a lot of a lot of things that I would never have done right. and, and he witnessed that and he just kind of broke down and he was like is that what you do is that what you have to go through because of course he didn't stay and watch me work he was just there on a day 
when I was just doing dialogue and, and it was just really hard on him. And I was like, no, I had to explain to him, no, I don't have to do those things. And, and that, that really shocked me. That really shocked me to see how those young girls were worked like that. It was, it was wow. very shocking, very shocking. And, and they weren't getting paid nearly as much as I was getting paid. So that, that really shocked me in Europe. There was a lot of, they did a lot of crazier things. I remember when I went there and they asked me, they were like, do you do anal? And I was like, no, I don't do anal. And they were like, you don't do anal. That was just like me saying, I don't do girls. They were like, well, that's- They couldn't believe it, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like unheard of for them. And, um, and it, was, it, was, it was very different there too. When usually when we go onto a video set, we have, we have like all of our, you know, like they give us everything we need for personal care and everything. And, and I remember when I got there, I remember I needed to curl my hair and I went to plug in my curling iron. I was like, huh, these plugs are so different. So everything was just like shocking to me over there. But the most shocking part was, was seeing how much harder the actresses worked and how extreme and and hardcore, much hard, much more hard than than scenes were out here in the U.S. So that was right. a bit more shocking. But of course, they're a lot more open with their sexuality in in Europe. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So they, they, you know, it's part of the course, right? Uh, yes. So to speak. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Sex with a regular guy and then sex with a porn star, right? It's got to be like a. But did you have any regular guys who were as good as the porn stars? Oh yes, I did. Yeah, um, really. Yes, I did. I I guess people ask me. A lot of people ask me, "How do you have sex for that long?" And if you watch an average scene, what is it about twenty minutes? 20 minutes. Uh, give or take, yeah. Probably so give or take. Go in and you know, it's just like you do you do your dialogue, your lead in, oral on the girl, oral on the guy, three positions, and then the, we call it the pop shot. And then is that which is what they call the cum shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the mm -hmm. shot. And and so that's about 20 minutes that you see. But for us. It probably takes us about a good two hours to shoot that, but we're not shooting continuously. It's right. stop and go. We have to change setups. They have to change the lighting. You know, they have a light guy in there with the light. You know, like that. You know, mm -hmm. you're and you're looking at this light guy. This like, right <laughs> there. okay, he's like open. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know. Interesting. So, so, so we have to do transitions just like, you know, you do when you're doing films. And, and of course, when you do those transitions, they do the transitions with the lighting. And, and it, it, every time we switch positions, you know, it's okay, okay we got to take the light and move it up. You know, if I'm sitting on top, okay, we got to put, put it on her face. You know, of course, it's not on the guy's face. It's on my face, you know, so you got to put the light on her face or, you know, if they're shooting from underneath, okay, you guys got to get in. So, so it was a lot of different things that were done when we were shooting. So that's probably what took the majority of the time, but we're not having sets for two hours straight. Gotcha. Well, I guess it's harder for the guy because he actually has to get it up. Yeah. And, and sometimes stay up, you yeah. know, because sometimes these transitions aren't that long. So the, the guy would just go off and he just, he, Keep going. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, so and, crazy. And you know, there were sometimes there would be girls on the set that they would hire to, to right. Yeah. They Keep call it going. Them, the fluffers, right? Fluff girls, fluff girls. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they had those girls on the set, but usually on our sets, we didn't have that. I, I worked with the professionals, so they you know, they were just it, like they didn't need it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, we're ready to go. Okay, we ready. Okay, we ready. Let's, okay, let's do doggy. Okay, reverse cowgirl. Okay, pile driver. Okay, okay, we're ready. Let's go. Let's shoot this. 
And it, it was really like that. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I, I, you know, with these artists, you know, and these parties, I bumped into a couple of male porn stars as well. So every time I encounter one, I'm always asking them, you know, how do you do? What do you do? How do you do it? They got all kinds of exercise tips and vitamins. Each person is different. But I've yeah. like two or three, they have different regimes and fitness and foods they eat. And um, I need my cum to be a certain thickness. So I eat this before, three or four days before. I, if I know I'm doing the scenes. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was quite interesting on the, uh, on the trainer level. Yes, yes. And, and a, a lot of the guys did not have sets at home the night before. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that, that's what my boyfriend did. And he worked almost all the time. So most of the time I was even able to have sets with him on some film because he was working all the time. And sometimes if he, if he had to work past five o'clock, then there was no sets that night. Right. There's no sets that night, but he he didn't work on the weekends, so it's unlimited sets for me. <laughs> but but yes, I guess has their own little thing that they did. Um, a lot of people would ask Peter North about how what he does to have his his cum shot, and and he says that he takes a lot of vitamins. And yeah, I think he takes a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes a difference. It it does, it does, so, it so I've been told, I spoke to a lot of guys, point, they gave me some excellent tips, really helped me out. So good looking guys, I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Diet, diet is really important. Did they tell you diet was really important? He says diet is very important. The foods that you eat are super important. See, the girls yeah. don't have to worry about the No, diet. the girls, yeah, it's not that, but the guys are always talking about the diet because they wanted to come and be thick, a certain color. Really? What kind of, yeah, it was, this one guy, you know, I sat down with him, I was, uh, I was training Buster Rhymes in California, and I just happened to see him at a party. And I was like, damn, dude, you look familiar. He's like, oh, I'm a fucking porn. Oh, I said, oh, yeah, 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 now I know who you are. So we started talking, and uh, I said, yo, you, you know, this, you mind if I have? He goes, guys ask me this shit all the time, man. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. So I picked his brains for like 20 or 30 minutes. Oh, wow. I, uh, I'm not sure if it was, um, I can't remember his name, but I'm sure you know him. I'm sure you know. I can't remember his name, okay. so I don't, wanna, I don't want to misquote. But um, yeah, he sat down and was like, "You know, you gotta do this. You should eat this. You should do that." I was like, "Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it." Wow. And then uh, one time I was at um, I was training an artist out here. I forgot which one in California, and I was at uh, Universal Studios. I was at the uh, Hilton, mm -hmm. you know. So I see this buff guy, and I sit next to him. I say, "Hey, what's going on, bro?" And he's like, yeah, I'm chilling, I'm chilling. I said, yeah, you know, I thought he was a trainer. So I said, because he was so jacked. I was like, oh, what are you doing here? You got some clients here? He goes, yeah, I got some clients here, I got some work. He says, what are you doing? And I told him the same thing. I got some clients here, you know, doing this job in the gig. So we start talking about fitness. You know, we're talking 20, 30 minutes. And I'm like, yo, I'm going, I'm, I'm about to go hit my session, train my dude. Good talking to you, you know what I mean? Let's exchange numbers or whatever. If you're going to be in LA, we can hook up. And uh, he was like, your session? What are you doing? He said, I thought you were in the porn. I'm a porn. He said, he said, he said, I'm a porn guy. I said, no shit. I thought you were a trainer. We just started laughing. It was the funniest oh, thing. Funny. I thought he was a trainer. He thought I was. He said, you know so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm, okay, I'm going to go do my session. He's like, session? What's that? <laughs> and then That's we started funny. talking, but it was, the, it was the funniest thing. It was really funny. Um, and then he was like, I said, so how did you get into it? He was like, man, I sent a, I sent a video of me with my girlfriend to a, to a company, and they just gave me a contract. Wow. So that, yeah, he was so good, and the, the dude was so jacked. He's, a, he's big now. He's big. I see him. I see him. He's big. He's a huge dude. He's a, he's a huge star now. What? And I said, yo, just from your video with your girlfriend? I said, you must be the man. We started laughing. Crazy, because normally... Um we would have casting calls and and we had an agent. So we'd go to these casting calls and we'd meet with the directors. And it was so crazy because for the women, we'd go in and meet with the director and they said, okay, we're looking for someone to play this part. And we'd have to disrobe and they'd take a Polaroid of us. And then they'd take those pictures to the big company owner. And then that's how they pick the cast for the movies. So that's how we did 
are casting. So to hear that someone just sent a video, and that's pretty amazing. He must have yeah. been amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, he said he was he was broke. He didn't have any money. And he said his girlfriend was like, dude, you are so good in bed. You got to just, just send a video of us. <laughs> his, girl, his girl told him, and, and they gave him a contract, flew him out. This was I think this was his like second film he was in there for. I met him in the university. But now he's a big star. Amazing. Yeah, it's maybe uh, maybe four years, five years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Now, now he's a huge. I'm happy for him, man. And then he was asking me for advice. He said, because uh, once I started showing him my clients, he's like, "Oh man, you're really established." I was like, "Dude, uh, uh, just don't just don't trick up all your money. Do something with your money." Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, he took that advice. But he's he's doing great. I see him. I see him all the time. He's all over the place. And there are a lot more male actors in the business now than there were when I was working. When I was working, there was just like a handful of guys that worked all the time. But now there's like so many new guys and 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 they have these only fan pages mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and they they become huge stars just from from their only fans and some of them have transitioned over to adult films. So it's a lot different now than it was when when I was working. Yes. <laughs> even, even so many trainers have the OnlyFans now. Yes. Yeah, I know a trainer. He's making fifty thousand dollars a month. OnlyFans. Nudity. Nudity. I don't know. I, I never looked at his page. What he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I never checked him, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure. But he said most of the people. Uh, it's mostly gay men. She said it's like oh. 70, 80 percent gay men are checking them out. Okay. Hey, money's money's he, green. He probably doesn't have to do that much, just sluts and yeah, that's what he was saying. He said, you know, I just I just exercise in my uh speedos, you know, I show my ass a little bit, you know, I'm not doing yeah. anything, I'm not doing any full nudity, but you that's know, just, yeah, that's what I told him. I said, Hey, good for you, man. Hey. <laughs> the male trainers can do that, but the female trainers know you got to do a little bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, you got to do more than that, I would imagine. Oh, I would yeah. imagine. <laughs> Is there yeah. anything that you haven't done that you want to do sexually that's on your list? What's on your list now? Uh, I think I've done. You did it all, right? More or less. I think I've about done it all. Um, I don't have a, a big bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I've, had, I've had a lot of fun and been able to express myself sexually in a lot of different ways and and yes I've had a lot of fun <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yes so nothing's yes. on your list you did that's a great thing though because most people have shit that they want to do that they've never been able to do I've, I pretty much have, have, have done it all yes I can't think of anything you well, probably made a couple of couple of guys uh, bucket list yourself, like you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Well, I, I would imagine so. Maybe. <laughs> but I was never. I got one on my list, and I was never able to get like a threesome or foursome in the United States. I was what? never able. To, I was never able to pull that off. Yeah. Overseas, I've done it. You know. Uh, oh, you said it. Okay, that's the key word in the United States. In okay. the United States, yeah, yeah. In in the U.S., I've never I've never been able to pull it off in the U.S. But you know, uh, just overseas, it just happened coincidentally. Like I fell into it, so that was great. But I've never been able to pull it off. I I, I, I like threesomes. They're they're a lot of fun. And when you have a threesome with someone, you have to that person has to be really comfortable with you and your relationship in order for you to bring someone else into the bedroom there can't be any insecurities and you have to be secure within your relationship i i loved having threesomes i love girls i i loved having threesomes they were a lot of fun <laughs> yeah yeah, I, yeah I, I had fun too i had fun i got into uh another one from the navy i was in uh, australia and i checked into a hotel and right across the from the room for me was an australian netball team female and I had been out to sea for two or three months. And uh, they were like, oh, you, your, your, your body's so amazing. You know, this, that, and the other. You know, come to our room and have some drinks. Wow. We had, we had a couple of drinks. And it, it must have been like seven or eight of them. Whoa. And in the room, they were all sure they had separate rooms, but they were all in this room. And they just started getting naked. It was great. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I didn't even do anything. I was so, so unexpected. See, and you, I was, I was like, directing and all kinds of stuff. That was great. But I was like, damn, I'd like to pull this off in the U.S., but I can never. 
you lived the life of a porn star. That sounds like a whole porn scene right there. <laughs> well, you know, I lived the lifestyle of a guy who never was able to get any females to a guy who uh, got a lot of females. And it actually, it led to a lot of great bad habits. You know? And you can say, look at me now. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It led to a lot of bad habits because it took me a long time getting out the military to be able to regulate and have regular relationships. How long did it take you? Um, when were you very super confident with your body, and and when did you reach the point to where you were like, I'm I finally made it to the point where I'm comfortable and I, I I'm a hundred percent. That's a that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't think people who start off like I got bullied and I was running home from school and all kinds of shit. I don't think you ever fully, ever fully recover from that. I'm very comfortable where I'm at now, you know, like I told you, uh, but I did everything uh, opposite. Everything that I wasn't, I, I couldn't fight. I learned how to fight. I didn't have any muscles. I got muscle. Every, every deficiency that I had, I addressed, mm -hmm. you know, so that it put me in a different place. But I guess the motivating factor now is always that fat guy, like, you know, keep on pushing, keep on working out, or always that kid running home from school for me. So I guess, uh, to be honest, I guess it's always there a little bit, but I think you uh, learn how to deal with it and cope and use it because you can yes. use your deficiencies to push you further a lot of times. It's not always a bad thing. Exactly. Exactly. I yeah. think I reached a point where I was super comfortable with my, well, when I was in, when I was in high school, you know, I'm from Georgia and the girls kind of develop a, a lot faster in mm -hmm. Georgia. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so when when I was when I was in high school, I my body I was pretty comfortable with my weight and my body, and I was able to maintain that into into my twenties. So I can say that I've always been comfortable with my body. But once I got into my my twenties and started to see that hey, I need to start working out. I need to keep working out. That's when I started going oh right. I, 10 pounds and I really got to do this. I really got to do that. I'm not happy with my body. But when I was younger, I could basically do whatever I wanted to do. And that's true. Muscle has memory. So, and I started working out when I was young, when I was 19, I had my trainer. So, so I just find that now that I, I don't work out as much as I did in my, in my twenties, but now even when I do start to trim down, I start to see my my abs start to come back in. Oh, you get it fast, huh? The genetics. Yes, yes. So, so that's and hard it. work, and hard work. You put the work and, in. And hard, hard work, hard work. Right now, I have to like really watch. What, what you I eat. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of. I don't eat a lot of carbs. I don't eat a lot of sugar like I did. I don't eat like I did when I was younger. So now it's more so just really having to watch what time I eat and and what I eat. And I don't eat a lot of fried foods or I, I try to eat a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables and, and just exercise. But I'm, I'm pretty busy over here. I'm pretty active. Right. And, and, you're, not, and, and you're not drinking now. You're completely no. sober with nothing, right? So that, that helps. I, I, I drink occasionally. <laughs> I went to this event on Sunday and, and I was drinking and I drink occasionally, but not too often. Right. Not too often. But yeah, it's, 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 it's so much easier when you, when you're watching what you eat and when you're exercising and I'm really happy where I'm at with that right now. That's good. Well, when you look great, let's see the guns. Oh, <laughs> I don't have any guns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like the outfit. I like the outfit, though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah. You. looking good. Looking good. Nice. nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, and and I've I've, I've actually lost lost a, quite a bit of weight over the past couple of months. I I started doing the intermittent fasting, and that's what I do. That makes a big difference. That makes a big it, difference. It really, it really, really does. Because I found found that I did most of my eating at night. I'm a night eater. Mm -hmm. I get up the night and come upstairs, and so I had to stop doing that. But you know, it's re really important to get a lot of rest too. And if you're sleeping well throughout the night and not getting up a lot, then you're not going to be coming upstairs and munching like that. So, so I just started started, you know, doing a little bit of exercise before I go to bed, and I found that that was making me, you know, sleep better and not oh. get up the night. Yeah. 
at the nighttime workouts, they keep me up all night. Uh, it I have a workout call, so, so I do my app work and stuff at the house, and and um, I have a few things at the house that, and plus I go to the gym. So, but I I try to do a little bit before I go to bed and tire myself out, and then I'll sleep throughout the night. So, gotcha. having a having a, a restful sleep is very important. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because that's when all your hormones replenish. You know, that's when you yes. really get the fat loss and and the, and the muscle growth for that matter. So the sleep is definitely yes. essential. Yes. Uh, the training, the diet, and the sleep. But I think the sleep is even more important because if you don't recover, you can't you can't train. Yeah, and the sex. Speaking of which, how, what's your what's your sex life now? How often are you having sex a week? Oh, I'm I'm not having sex at all now. I'm I'm not seeing anybody so. I'm I'm basically a workaholic now. So nothing. No, not not right now. Wow, wow. Nope. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that answer. You weren't. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna say five days a week. No, six but days you know, a week. Normal for me when I'm in a relationship is usually like three times a day. Ah, okay. Like like and, and before bed, right when you wake up, and maybe midday. Depending on depending on what I had going on, when I was working, I, I wasn't doing the three times a day with my boyfriend, but at least twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. But when, yeah. I'm in, when I'm in a relationship, yeah, I love sets. Yeah, because <laughs> you got the you got your partner there. Yeah, it makes sense to yeah, me too. It yeah, makes sense. Yes, yes. He's there when you wake up. He's there when you go to bed. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I, I'm good with twice a day. I can deal with that. <laughs> I can deal with twice, twice a day. Twice a day, I'm good. The three is a bonus. When you go to bed, right? Yeah, you know, three a day I can do on an off day of training. But yes, three, a day, yes. three a day is tough when I'm running six to ten miles and lifting weights for an hour. But two, two a day, I'm cool. Oh, you run six miles a day? Uh, it depends on what I'm training for. If I, some days I have run days. Some days I'm jumping rope. Some days I'm lifting weights. So, uh, so it, it all depends on the schedule. What's what's going yeah. on? Like, like I'm, I'm on a comeback trail right now from the injury, so I'm really trying to get in my best shape right now. So I totally want to fight. So you look so awesome. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And uh, you know, my girl is like, "Wow, she's amazing!" Like, "Wow, you can really have sex as much as you want, huh?" I said, "If I don't train, yeah, yeah." So she's happy. The working out works, guys. The training works. If you train and take vitamins and you get sleep, it definitely you can go well with into your fifties. I'm fifty three so far and still rocking pretty strong. And you look awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> As do you. As do you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you talk you. about your age. You don't want to get into your age, right? I'm 52. Okay. Okay. So you're a year younger than me. Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking great. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Most 50-year-olds are not looking like us. So that's good. Kudos to you. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. advice would you give to a, a girl getting into the adult industry right now? What would you... Oh, wow. The adult industry now is a lot different than it was when I was working. I, I would say to have creative control over what you want to do, be comfortable with yourself and what you're doing. And I, I know a few of the actresses now that are doing their own thing and and they they're basically shooting their own productions and so I think it's very important to just be in control over your your body, what you what you want to do, and don't do what someone tells you to do. Be just very comfortable with what you're doing and have fun. And if you can do that, then you could have a good time in the industry and enjoy it. Okay. And what are your what are what are your goals now? What are your future aspirations? What are you going to be doing a year from now? What do you think? What would you like to be doing? A year from now, well, maybe I'll put out another book within mm -hmm. that um, year. I'm hoping to have some more artists for my concerts and to just be in better shape, to be in better um, physical and mental shape. You know, it's every day. Every day I try to do something to better myself. So, so I just, just want to be a better person. A better me. Perfect. Hey, that's, a great, that's a great answer. That's a great mm -hmm. answer. And and you're, uh, I like that you said you're addressing your wellness, your physical, your mental, your overall wellness. I think yes. that's important because uh, 
so many people, you know, we have certain quadrants, you know, like some people have physical wellness, other people have mental wellness, some people have social wellness, but it's very hard to get every aspect when you need a certain percentage of every quadrant to be yeah. fully well, you know, so. I, I have, right now. And I have to take some time and away from relationships and stress and just love me. And it's, it's very important that you love yourself. And I had to reach that point in my life and I'm still getting to know me and what Deirdre, that's my, my name, Deirdre, what Deirdre likes. So mm -hmm. it, it, mental health is very important and most people don't take like that part. Of, yeah. But um, I take the time to, and I, I make sure that I sit for like, 10 minutes a day and with just nothing on and just meditate. Meditation is very important. And just, just having a healthy output on life. And I, I try, I try to just keep, um, have positive thoughts about life. And that's what I do. Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> and, um, uh, for being fit, uh, at 50, you have any tips for our people out there for our ladies? It's, it's very important that you drink a lot of water. It's very important that you that you that you do exercise, at least take some walks, take walks every day or, you know, do some type of exercise. If I'm not on my exercise ball doing my sit ups, I'm I, I drink a ton of water. I, I watch what I eat and I just have positive vibes in my life, positive people around me. I don't have a lot of toxicity around me. I did before when I was younger and, and it was just very draining and stressful and stress, stress will kill you. Yeah. Faster than anything. You're right about that. It's your blood pressure. It makes you get wrinkles. It just, stress will just kill you. And I just try to have positive people in my life that have my back. It wasn't always like that, but now as I got older, as you get older, you realize how important it is to have good- It's true, a support system. It does It yeah. does make a world of difference, yeah. It, it does make a world of difference. And I don't have a, a lot of people in my circle. It's, it's mostly me and, and my family, but I, I don't really involve myself in a lot of craziness, I I'm, I have a pretty mellow lifestyle right now. So right, you're chilling. You're chilling right now. Chilling. I'm chilling, and um, I I did all that crazy fun stuff when I was in my twenties, and and I'm just chilling right now. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah me, too, me, me too. I did a lot of crazy shit. You know, uh, I had a lot of wild times. All I gotta do is get a threesome or foursome in the states, and then I'm then I'm chilling. Yeah, you better be good. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then I'm chilling, but that's that's my last one on the list. Maybe I, maybe I knock it out, maybe I don't, but you know. It's you, not bad. To, it's not you, bad to have one you didn't knock that's, it out. That's not, that's I, I can live with it. I can live with it. That's an easy one, I, I would think for you. <laughs> uh, it all depends. It all depends. So if people want to get at you, how can they reach you? What's your social? What, I'm I'm on Instagram and it's um, Dominique um, D O M O N I Q U E underscore Simone S I M O N E underscore on Instagram and um, this is my my book. Yeah, bring, bring it closer, bring it closer. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Star is born. Dominique and this Simone. Is the back cover. Nice. And this and 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 it's a really amazing book. I have a lot of. Um, um, a lot of pictures in here, a lot of color pictures. Nice. And, well done, well done. Yeah, it's a, the book is very well done. And just a lot of pictures. And I will be doing some autograph signings at, here's another picture. Yeah, so, oh, so yeah. Closer. Yeah, oh, nice, nice oh, on the beach. Yeah. That's a beautiful picture. Yes, yes. I, I've worked with some amazing photographers and I was I was very blessed to work with a great photographer that shot my cover. 
and um, great makeup people. And, and, you know, I have my publicist, Barbara, who is amazing. I just, yeah, she's the best Barbara. Shout out to Barbara. I love her. Yes, she has, she has like really been a blessing to me and, and the success of my book. So I'm really starting to get out there and promote it now. And I'll probably be out there meeting some fans, signing some books, signing some autographs. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, I can't wait to meet you in person. Uh, we have to get a session in, but it's yes, been a, it's, we, 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 going. Gotta, we gotta get one in. Do that, yes. Yeah, either either online, I'll give you, you know what, one on the house. So after this, we'll we'll get scheduled and you do one on me, and then we'll, we'll take you through a session. I want to get you a copy of my book as well. And oh. please uh, send me your book with a nice I, autograph. That would be so I, awesome. And I, I, I'm, thank you for, for coming on. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. This was amazing. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. You had fun. Is there any anything you want to part with? Anything we didn't want we didn't cover you want to talk about? Any last statements? I think we covered so much and more. <laughs> and we did. We did. We just started talking, actually. I, I have a list of questions, but I think I got one or two on the list. Interview, I got to interview you as well. Yeah, so. yeah. You switched it on me. You started yeah. asking me questions. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. That's the first. That's the yeah. first. But thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate thank it. You and, and, you, and, you, and you have to come back. I will. I will. Thank you. All right. Hang on. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the outro on, but you don't go anywhere. Okay. Okay, guys. Peace. It's been a great episode. Incorporate wellness into your lifestyle and uh, have a great day. Peace and love, family.